Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Underground. As always, explain I come up the title Underground. I was thinking about the Underground Church in present day Iran and China, where there's places where just outpouring of the Holy Spirit is overwhelming. I was looking yesterday about uh, in Africa about some people that uh, over Christmas, uh, you know, around Christmas time this year, they've lost uh, so many people. There's certain areas in, in uh, Africa where uh, there's just a genocide over uh, Christians and they're being persecuted and killed. We are, uh, the body of Christ has always been in, you know, meaning the church has always been in tribulation. But we're not here for the seven-year tribulation. That's not a false doctrine. I've had all kinds of accusations against me and, and things like that. And uh, I expect that. I expect it uh, all the time. There's a lot of people there are lost. A lot of people are following uh, uh, doctrines that are not true. And they're quick to uh, point the finger at you. That's what's not in the military. We always do like this, you know, uh, point like this because we never point like X. If you point one finger at somebody, you got three pointing back at yourselves. That's just a military thing. Um, thought it was crazy, but I remember some the, years ago, one of the sergeants telling me, that's what you do. You should point with your hand. But uh, there's a lot going on. We're in the last days. We're right before the, the, the rapture, pre-tribulation rapture of the body of Christ. I'm about to explain the myth that there's actually 10 biblical raptors. People don't teach that. but uh, And I watch what I say teach. You know, people gun on to me, you know, and attack me. No, I'm not a scholarly person. I'm a simple man. I love to read God's word and I love to break it down and, and just be in the word of God and health reasons keep me here. Um, I still try my best to do things. Today was a good day. I did a workout earlier which is the first time I did a, a, a workout like that uh, for a while because because my health and stuff. But uh, my son was in here, and he was online using the computer to uh, play games with his older brother, just like kids. And uh, I was able to uh, – I went in the other room. I was feeling somewhat decent. I've been up all night. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. It's a long story. I was hurt, and then I did some stretches and did some kicks and punches and stuff like that. So – I was able to get a good workout, and like I said, it's probably been two two good weeks since I've done that. So I might feel good today, or I might be sore this afternoon. I'm old, so it, it, that's the way it reacts. But uh, I'm so grateful. I, I've been up and down all night, and it's been just a wonderful time. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but just I love God, and, and, and so over, overwhelmed uh, that uh, we are so close to. We're in that season. We know when it started. It started in October. Psalm 83 war. And like I, I, I broke, I was looking at some studies today and then reading stuff. And and I, I sent a message to another person's uh, channel. That's uh, New News by Ross. He did a good in-depth study today. But people were giving him timelines. And, and people were getting crazy with these date setting stuff. And, you know, and at first I was like, it's all right. You know, I've looked at timelines myself. But the more I realized it's a process, you know, when did the time start well, we didn't know when it started until the Psalm 83 war, which was in October 7th. And that's how we know the season. And it talks about how Paul writes, we'll know the season for the pre-tribulation rapture. Well, we're in that season right now. But when's that season end? You know, a lot of people are like, when's it end? You know, people are looking at, they looked at 7 December. People were looking at 7 January. Now they're saying 11 January. And, and I, you know, I don't anymore, but I had at these areas, just to use scripture, but I would say, you know, I use what, what Jesus would say. No one knows the day or the hour. Why are we putting dates out there of days? That doesn't mean how wide it's time. Like, say, this week here or this week there. Uh, someone put out a study that was because of uh, uh, Esther, that it was from uh, the good uh, watch time, high watch time, was uh, December 13th to January the 10th. And I looked at that study. It was a while back. And that was a very good study. A lot put in there. And... Uh, it could be. There's a lot of rapture scenarios, but it doesn't. You know, we're going. They're going we're caught off guard for a reason. Uh, the world is, and that's because Satan's looking to grab us. I don't think enough are taught to people that Satan has authority here on Earth and the surrounding areas. Daniel talked about in one of his visions. It took 32 days for an angel to come down and giving the answer to his vision because he was fighting. You know, in the spirit world, he was fighting back and forth, and he couldn't fight his way through to earth to get to Daniel till Michael came and helped him, and he got to Daniel and 
uh, talk to him. Well, that's what's right now. Satan, that's the reason why it's a mystery. Satan and Jesus Christ himself is coming to get us, all right? And I'm going to explain that a little bit in Scripture. I love reading Scripture. And I'm going to explain that in Scripture, why. Uh, why crisis? There's, there's a lot of meanings to what's going on. And so it's opening of our eyes and just a blessing from God. And uh, this channel, uh, I just looked uh, today, I think I have 615 subscribers. So I've got two more people. Every now and then I'll lose one or two people. Maybe I say something that they don't like. And then all of a sudden I'll get two or three more on top of that. And it's been a blessing because I gave this to God two, two and a half, three months ago. And uh, I've been doing this for four years. I just want to talk about God after I went through my cancer and give a testimony. I meant to make one video, then it wound up over a period of time. I've been doing a lot of videos, and I just put out my Bible studies in there. Some things that are outlandish people don't, may not even like. I did a video uh, one time. I was, <clears throat> excuse me, my sinuses. I've been eight years Air Force. Then I was 13 years Army National Guard. I'm a retired veteran. And so... Uh, I did survival training in the Air Force. So I know that's gross, but I got into the subject of cannibalism one time. So I, I did a video about being a cannibal and how, uh, and I gave some scenario. I mean, talked some people through stories about uh, where they survived because they did cannibalism and actually were, were never to do something like that. It's better off to starve to death than, but it's easier saying done because your flesh does not want to die. I've seen that many times. I'm a combat veteran. I've seen people die in many ways. And your flesh fights it here yeah, because your flesh itself, it don't want to die. And so uh, that's how, you know, people are the world. They, they they give in to their flesh and it controls them. Don't realize how much controlling it is. But uh, I, I ramble on too much. But anyways, so this is, we're in the season, all right? Like I said, it's starting in October and we're looking at November, December, January, and then uh, maybe into February. But beyond that, no, no. Uh, and I'm not date setting and going, well, we're, it's just, we know. Uh, we know. The body of Christ knows. And so that's the reason why a lot of people are having dreams and different things. God's calling us. And our time is, is close. And, uh, and that doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with trying to look for dates. I just don't look at, look for a date. Now, if you like, a, well, maybe within these two days or three or four days, well, that's fantastic. It's a high watch time. Then it, well, it wasn't that high watch time. Well, looks for looks look for another. And so that's fine because they're what are they doing? They're they're looking for a Christ's second coming. There is a crown we get called a crown of righteousness for those that are constantly looking for a second coming, joyously want a second coming. We are given a crown that we can lay at Jesus' feet. And by all means, I think uh, uh, I'm not a worthy person. I, I'm saved because of Jesus' sacrifice. But I, I hope to have a crown to lay at his feet to give back uh, to what he's done for me. Because I'm a wretched sinner. I'm a broken man. And, and things in my life. And I'm far from perfect. But God, God's done so much for me in my life. So we start out with my rapture info. To give that out to people that have uh, don't understand uh, things or looked at it differently. This is just how I, I looked at uh, uh Recently, oh, I don't have my paperwork here. I've sat down. Old man moment. But uh, I, I recently looked online. I was going through this, and I seen someone made this list similar to it, except I added two more things to it. Thanks to Mr. Man, he he put out there about uh, Paul and John. I'm like, really? I forgot about those two. <laughs> so I'm so thankful for him. I can't wait to meet him. Uh, so, and, and we disagree on things. But that's that's what the, the disagreement's fine. But uh, uh, some people, when they, I had someone disagree <laughs> on a video I made and uh, put out some stuff and, and said to me, said, uh, uh, gave me some scripture, said, you need to read this. <laughs> That's what I don't like when people are like, you need to. Uh, because he told me I just, uh, on some stuff, I've just opinionated. And I'm like, well, I, uh, no interpretation. And I wrote yesterday, I said, well, uh, you, your interpretation is, is it may not be the correct interpretation. We can argue back and forth all day long on this. Why do this? You know, we disagree on this matter. So let's leave it at that. But he was, he gave me three, about three different uh, uh, comments that were kind of hinting, you know, read this or you need to read it. <laughs> so that's it. You deal with people and that, that's the way it is. But uh, 
as I said, this is the same list I, I sent to uh, uh, Ross on New News to, to show where I was looking at and different things. I know he wouldn't take it in a bad way. He would look at it and he may or may not comment on it. I He may go, oh, that looks pretty good. Or well, I disagree on it. I don't mind that. I, actually, I love talking to someone else who's really in God's word. I just don't want to do it in an argumentative way. There's no reason to argue. Because uh, I, I'd step on and say, I'm willing to make a mistake. Uh, I mean, I'm willing to admit if I made a mistake, if something's shown to me. There's been times through the years I've, I've, things have been shown to me, so I, I'll go back and study. Not that I'm compliant, but I, I'm, I want to learn God's Word myself. I, I got the hunger for the Scripture, <laughs> so I don't mind that at all. So Rapture Info, as I always explain, I don't know people coming to the channel. It's a blessing of God. This is all about God. Uh uh, like I said, I've been in this for a long time and, and only had like 20 subscribers. And then three, uh, two and a half, three months ago, I gave this to God. And all of a sudden it's, well, I'm up to 600, uh, 20, 21, 22 subscribers. And now I'm up to 615. So I say me, but it's really, <coughs> excuse me, God. And it's all about God. So uh, I like to put this out. A couple things at first, my Raptor, Raptor info page. And then from that, I like to get into the study. <coughs> Excuse me, bear with me. I've been coughing. I've had throat trouble and everything else. It's that time of year again. Awesome. So the Bible is written, New Testament's in Greek. Old Testament is Hebrew with a couple of areas, Old Aramaic. It is not, you cannot understand the Bible if you read it with a Western mindset. It's not Western mindset at all. You have to know the culture and uh, the culture of the Middle East, and then it gives you more understanding of the Bible. So, and also people are like, well, I'm confused on things. The more you study, you give your life to God, then you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, we'll, a lot of things are going to open up to you. You know, I'm 58 years old and uh, things are just now starting to open up to me, last, last, especially the last couple of years. Now, I say that because I just thought about something. Oh, man, moment. I have trouble with my memory, short-term memory, my speech. As you can tell, my size, I got a lot of health issues. I'm just an old dog. That's my old country boy. I'm old country dog here. But uh, I gave a statement to a church I visited a few years ago. Actually, I was I was right before I retired from the military. I was 51 at the time. And uh, I was talking to him. And I said something to him. By the way, things were looking in the world. I said, I get my retirement at 60. By doubt, I'll see it. I'll be raptured up before 60. And he's like, you think so? And that was... I was 51 years old. Now I'm 58 years old. April, I'll be 59 years old. And I, I think I need to change that to, I want him to see 59 before I'm raptured. So that's the way I look at it. But back then I was looking at my studies and stuff. And I knew five to 10 years, but I really didn't think 10 years, you know, when I'm 60, I'm like, I just don't think I'll see 60. And I don't, I don't think so either. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the, uh, like I said, in the, oh, it, the the Bible is not written in English, so uh, when we talk about rapture, it's not in the Bible. Okay, a lot of people. Well, I've been looking; it's not in there. Well, that's not English. I tried to explain one time one time to someone about the uh, New Testament being in Greek, and he, he sent some stuff to me comments. I don't care about Greek. Why are you talking Greek to me? Because the New Testament is written in Greek. So <laughs> and so uh, we back and forth, and I was trying to be helpful, and I realized this conversation got. Pretty bad. There was like 14 comments, and he was saying all sorts of stuff to me, insulting. And finally, I left, and then he called me coward. And then he's gone. My previous videos, he's five or six others I've done in the past uh, last couple of years. He's gone on and don't listen to this uh, uh, how YouTube guy. He started naming me YouTube guy. Don't listen to this YouTube guy. People are going to know this is for the body of Christ, and they know uh, those people come on this channel and try to delude things and stuff. And, you know, I, I've been harsh to some people. I've said, quit being uh, delusional, or I may say, quit working for Satan, because that's what they're doing. If they're, <laughs> we're, we're to call out, you know, we're, we're supposed to understand. I could be standing, sitting here, and all of a sudden an angel appear right before me and say, John, God's got, wants you to do this. Well, I have to question that angel, because that, that may not be an angel of God. It may be an angel want to follow him with Satan. And so you have to understand the scriptures. That's our armor of God is the scripture. Scripture is everything. And so uh, New Testament was, uh, like I said, Greek. So the word harpazo, where we get the Latin word rapturo, 
And then, of course, English word rapture. Now, when I talk about rapture, I mean, I mean the next rapture in Chronicle line, which is pre-tribulation rapture. There's actually uh, 10 biblical raptures according to the scriptures. How we know the raptures is by her apostle phrases, caught up, falling away, departure, uh, translated. All different ways of rapture. Because rapture means taken from one place to another. Translated. It may not be up. Maybe one spot. Like Philip, he was taken from one spot to another. And I'll get into that. Uh, also, ecstasy. It's exciting. There, there's gladness to it. So first, Enoch was raptured in Genesis 5, 21 through 24. And Hebrews 11, 5. Elijah, uh, 2 Kings 2, 11, he was raptured. I consider Jesus' ascension, Acts 1, 9 through 11, a rapture. Philip, Acts 8, 26 through 40, when he was taken up, caught up not to heaven after he baptized the Ethiopian, but over to a different area to preach. Paul, 2 Corinthians 2, 12, he was raptured up for a vision, uh, a vision, <laughs> a vision <laughs> into heaven. John, Revelation 4, 1 through 2, was raptured up, or he would not have been able to read the book, uh, wrote the book of John. Now, what we're waiting for next is the pre-tribulation rapture, which is the body of Christ. And that's Matthew 24, 36 through 51, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. And then mid-tribulation, there's the two witnesses. After they lay dead in the street th three and a half days, they come back to life, then they're raptured up. That is Revelation 11, 3 through 12. And then when we come with the body of Christ, Jesus Christ comes with all of his glory, we're it. This when he explains about glory. He's talking about us. We're his glory. We're his testimony. We didn't have to die because we believed in, in the sacrifice he made and who he was. And so uh, as we come down, it talks about the martyred saints, Revelation 4, 14 through 16. They, they, they were martyred during the seven-year tribulation. Their bodies will come out of the graves and get the souls that were in heaven under the altar. And uh, they'll meet as we go and as we touch the ground. The tenth rapture. It's Revelation 4, 17 through 20. All to Armageddon. Like Philip was taken from one spot to another. Everybody's going to be called to Armageddon. I had someone uh, talk to me against this. That person I was talking about, because he was talking about uh, Matthew 13. Talking about, the, you know, at the end, judgment, uh, the wheat and tares. Well, that's exactly what this is all about. Revelation 4, 17 through 20. It's the same thing. Sheep on the right, goats on the left. It's... The judgment Jesus will do. So it is the wheat and tares. But uh, he attacked me and said, whatever. I understand that. You know, there's going to be confusion. Uh, confusion could be from the flesh. Or those that are not the body of Christ will not see. They'll use scripture and be confused. Why? Right? Because they don't have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, I also give a shout out to different other people. They're not always perfect. I'm not always perfect. But I still think they're good to listen to. I may not agree on anything, uh, I'm all 100%. Like uh, Watchman River by Tom Cope, uh, Watchman on the Wall 88 by Chad, New News by Ross, Watchman Adam, of course, by Adam. He's a new Christian, and you can tell he's been throwing stuff out there. He's on fire, but some things I disagree with you. He did a video the day after, two days, a couple videos ago, I started talking about Watchman Adam, and he made a video about Trump. I was like, oh, man, you, you don't know, get it. Trump is not a godly man, he's evil. Uh, you have to really research and understand Satan can use anybody, I mean, delude uh, anybody. And, and I know people will attack John, Trump, Trump. Let me tell you something, people. Uh, this this uh, United States is damned. The United States should be damned. We're worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. What is happening in this country makes me want to vomit, especially with all the sexual perversions in this country. Uh, the children by the thousands are used for sexual trafficking. What do you think we got open borders for? Right in front of your faces. Uh, these kids are being taken, crossed over, and used by majority by the elites in this country and by uh, politicians. There, there is no Republican against Democrat. They're all evil. All right. There, there's, there's maybe a handful of people are good in government, but the rest is evil. And there's no correcting this government. Trump runs on that. He wants your vote. Uh, everybody thought he's done so great. A lot of good things happened while he's president of the United States. That's true. But there's a lot of things he's involved with. All right. He's pushing two state solution, still wants a two state solution for Israel. All right. I understand that. As saying in law, by his order, was involved in the peace treaty trying to make that happen. So I bet Biden administration is upset with Israel right now. What's going on? Because Israel's 
wins, they're not going to get two-state solution. They want that two-state solution. They want to divide Israel. Also, Trump's involved in a lot of other things. Uh, the COVID vaccine handout being fast. He brags about that. Uh, there's different things he's involved with. If you research, you'll understand. He, in the 5G technology and more that he wants to you know, push, I understand Donald Trump's an elite just like everyone else. I mean, all the others. And he's fooled a lot of people. Uh, so point that people worship him. And people, I may lose subscribers. I may drop 20 subscribers they hear me, hear me talk about Trump. I mean, people are so messed up. Well, he's a godly man, is he? Uh, the only person I've seen him following as an example for a spiritual leader was Paula White. She did a, a, some stuff with him there in the White House. And, and I'm like, people, uh, women, uh, women are not to be ministers. All right, that's man. And that's not John Spangle. That's God. That's scripture. There's a reason for things. God does things for a reason. So therefore, God's not going to work through a female minister. It's impossible. He set man up to be a minister. And Paul talks about it. Uh, there's a lot there. Okay. And so this is what it is. Um, Dr. Barry All, <laughs> it's a crazy guy. But uh, I end with him, and I'm not going to give out any more uh, characters. Um, uh, Watchman channels because he's doing a thing right now where he's having uh, Luke Watchman through Luke and there uh, each day he's had a Watchman like a, a Watch River by Tom Cope him and his wife did a, a video and then uh, uh, Watchman Adam did one for him where they where they're reading a chapter out of Luke so he's got a whole list that I would go through well why make that list when you can go and see see all this list of people that are Watchmen out there and and I recommend uh, watching them do it with the Bible, do it using God's word so you're not uh, uh, misled. That's the same as me. I tell people, you, and I don't mind people talking to me in Scripture, but when they bring you to Scripture and have this discussion or, or disagreement, come with Scripture, but don't say, you need to read this, or you need to do this, or you're a false teacher. You're doing more than just bringing Scripture. So there's no reason for that. Psalm 91, 1 through 16. I tell this Jesus come for us in the rapture. There's a reason he comes for us. And I'm going to get through these uh, and then uh, explain that real quick, <laughs> which takes a while for me. Nothing's ever quick. He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. And God uh, gives us security. Our, we're safe through God. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from noise. Noisome of pestilence. Uh, in other words, keeping us from destruction. He shall cover thee with feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His tr truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth today. We're, we're, uh, we have no fear, and we're protected under God. Uh, the whole reason for doing this was, was understanding that a lot of things are happening right now. This world's getting dark. Uh, we are the light and salt of this world. That's why we had to be raptured out before the Antichrist comes about. He comes out of the chaos. You know, and he's like, I've got answers to everything. Uh, but it's going to get dark. And we're seeing the darkness now. You're seeing all kinds of stuff. You don't know what's true, what's not true. The thing in Miami was, was a Nephilim down there? Or was it a bunch of kids getting violent and, and things getting crazy out of hand and with all this uh People say, well, all the, the cops and everything showed up wouldn't be for just a bunch of kids in, in a mall. Well, understand, we've got a lot of shootings been going on in this country. We've got a lot of uh, uh, different things like that, a lot of terrorist threats. So I could see a few going out there. I really don't see 60 or more cops going out there unless something in helicopters or something really major is going on. But I, I'm not there, so I'm not going to go on here see. And do I actually think that there's Nephilim? Uh, Around, obviously. Uh, I remember when I was in uh, Iraq, 2000, it was uh, February 18th, 2003, till around uh, June 20th, 24th of uh, 2004. I met when I went to Kuwait and went down to a supply run, go down every so often, go down and get more supplies, and then come bring back up where we were staying, different areas in. Iraq, yeah, in Iraq. So we went down to Kuwait, and I met some guys that were special operations. This is in 2003. And we were talking, 
because when guys come up to me, they know I like to carry my Bible and talk about God. And I've talked about Nephilim and the Giants, and they say, you need to talk to these guys, the Special Operations Giants, which we worked with them a little bit later. Uh, I was known as the crazy guy. There, there's a quick story to that. But um, we went there and we talked, and they were talking about Kendar and this area in Kendar uh, about the giants and stuff. So uh, do I believe in there's still giants today? Absolutely. Uh, they're not as big as they were pre-flood. But post-flood, the giants, there's an incursion. And there was 26. I mean, I did a video on there's 26 tribes in the, in the promised land. The Israelites were called giant killers. They were killing giants. There was many. There's more. Goliath had four brothers. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of areas, if you really look back, especially in World War II in certain islands, uh, Somalian islands, with, with the Japanese people were just getting eat up because they were cannibals. So there's a lot of things out there. And, uh, yes, now am I saying these were Nephilim giants through a portal here in Miami, Florida? Possibility spiritually, yes. Was it? Don't know. I won there. There's, there's no way of knowing. I only go by what people say, and I'm not going to get into that. There's no some reason for it. But I do know we're in that time where you're going to see things like this, and it's going to escalate. It's going to be worse because if they weren't giants, it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the veil is being opened. Because Armageddon is, is a, a mixture of war. Satan's using everything in Armageddon. So, uh, but by God's word, it's over. But, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of veil that's being opened up. It's been opened up since the 50s. And it's getting worse, and you're going to see things. That's just what I'm saying. We're not in fear. We got God. God's taking care of us. Man will be in fear because he'll see boring, but we'll be gone. <sighs> and I got to find my place. Sorry about that. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the of the wicked. Now we're spiritually through God. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, in the most high thy habitation. We live for God, and because that God God loves us, work, you know, He's our Father. He's my Father. I'm a child. I'm a child of God. So He protects me. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh the dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep in thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against thy stone. Uh, I've said it numerous times. I'm a combat veteran. I survived a lot of stuff. Uh, but even in the civilian world, I was always talking about my train accident. Where I was going to work one day years ago, I worked in the, after I got out of that. I was a little of Air Force Base after I got out of the military. Before I went to Army National Guard years later, I was living down in Arkansas for a while. And so uh, I worked for this company. And as I was going to work, it was a rebel tracks, you know, double tracks. The arms come down. Lights didn't go up. I waited. It was known. Those tracks were always messing up like that. It was in town. Yes, a few hundred yards to the right was a curb. But uh, trains go through there slow. They're supposed to have 15 miles per hour, you know, slow. So I waited and waited and waited. And I'm like, dude, if I go wait or if I go around, it's going to take forever. Then the arms went up. I'm like, thank goodness. And as I was going down, I noticed the arms come down. So I swerved. Actually, I hit my car and I swerved. Uh, as I was trying to go like this, go around it and go through, I looked up. I heard the horn. This train comes barreling 50s because later talked to the, the conductor or engineer running the train. You know, uh, He got a ticket because he was speeding. He was running late, and it was like 50 or 60 miles per hour. Hit my vehicle, all right? You could go like this with your hand and go like right here, and the only spot left in that vehicle was where I was sitting. Engine gone, everything. Took that vehicle for a long distance, and it, it then flipped over it, like spun it around off the track. And then I got out. You know, I got out. And uh, it was just a situation that, of course, it caused me back travel later. I, I was young. I didn't go to the hospital didn't think I should have. I signed a waiver and didn't go, and I wish I had. Twisted my back, and since then I have all kinds of problems, and it just escalated after that. You know, working in underground coal miner for many years and being in the infantry for many years didn't help the back. But, uh, yeah, that was an experience, and, and there's many more I could get into. Uh, just uh, 15, 16 months I was in Iraq. 
Uh, so there, there's people, you know, God's out there. He'll take care of his own. That doesn't mean things don't happen. Uh, things can happen. You know, people die in accidents and different things. Uh, but uh, I'm big about when it's our time, it's our time. And so uh, just say that, you know, I believe in guardian angels and, and we do have them. But that doesn't mean evil can't happen to people. We, we live in a fallen world. But once we belong to God, we are his. Thou shalt tread upon the, the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. I give everything to God. He shall call upon me and I shall answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him with long life. I shall satisfy him and show him my salvation. In other words, God's gift of grace to us uh, for believing in him. John 10, 22 through 39. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple, Solomon's porch. And they came the Jews around about him and said to him, How long does that make us doubt? If thou be Christ, tell us plainly. After all, I the stuff he done miracles. They just didn't, they couldn't see it. And then Jesus explains why. And this is relevant to today. That's why I put this in there about people and, and arguing over pre-tribulation rapture and things like that. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I go in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. In other words, when he, when he did uh, miracles, he showed his authority. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You know, we belong to Christ. He is, he is our shepherd. Uh, they do not. They didn't, you know, make that distinction as Jesus being the Messiah, so they couldn't see. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Talking about us, he gives us eternal We have eternal life, the gift of grace. My Father, which give, gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then Jesus took up stones, and then the Jews took up stones again to stone Jesus. And Jesus answered, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? He's talking about the miracles, you know, healing and, and, and uh, bringing demons out of people. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. And Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods, and to them the word of God came out, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye and him who the Father hath sanctified, and who sent into the world, thou blamest, I mean, blasphemest? Because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. You know, he's doing his Father's work. He's not doing the evil things. But if I do, though, ye believe, not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, and he but escaped out of their hand. So he was beyond their understanding. Of course, they're crucifying him. And because they didn't totally agree with what was being said, uh, comments from people that uh, that they were going to attack him. I love uh, John 14, 1-6. This is more in Jesus' words, and it's a promise uh, uh, made by Jesus to us. And I'll end with this. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I would go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That there I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we not know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. I am saved by the grace of God, just like anybody else who is part of the body of Christ. Jesus died for past, present, and future sins, being that perfect sacrifice and changing all the laws and, and making a new covenant, the final covenant, which is considered the eighth covenant. Um, I gave, I gave my life to God. I admitted I'm a wretched sinner. There's no hope for me, and I don't deserve heaven. I deserve hell. There's nothing I can do to deserve heaven. And because of this, I I'm, I got on my knees. I prayed to God. I asked for forgiveness. And I get, like I said, I submit myself to God. And later I was obedient. But at that moment, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because later I uh, was baptized. But I didn't need to be baptized to be saved. It was symbolic. And so... Uh, I belong to, to God, and 
I'm learning as I go, but I'm just a child. I'm a, may look like an old man, be an old man here on earth, but uh, to God, I'm just, a, I'm just a child, just like anybody else. So I make mistakes, but God knows my knows where I'm trying to. Uh, I want to say my heart, but then the heart's the flesh. It's, but God knows I'm trying to be correct in what I do and be obedient. And I love him so much. And I want to end uh, with this part here. John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. That's the Holy Spirit to endure. Even the spirit of truth, when the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. That's how a lot of people argue in different things. Even people using scripture, they don't see it. Why they don't have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I shall I live. You shall also live also. Talking about salvation. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I am you. He that command, hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So Jesus Christ, when I talked about before in John 14, 1 through 6, he prepares a place for us. Understand this. It's been over 2,000 years he's been preparing a place for us. Earth was done in six days, literal days. People argue, no, because Jesus Christ, thought, I mean, God puts it in there in Genesis Literal days. So uh, Jesus has been preparing, preparing a place for us for thousands of years. So just think how wonderful it's going to be. And we have a mansion. And I got areas in this house that's just, this house is really, I showed Jacob the other day and we went in the other room. A lot more cracks because this roof, they didn't put trestles up. They put boards when they redid this roof uh, uh, after the storm hit over a year ago on this house. And like I said, there's areas this house is not done yet. Uh, but uh, it is what it is because we're going to go to uh, God. And I know that they didn't re-insulate areas in the house because this house is colder than it used to be. And we've got a brand new furnace. So I told Jacob the reason for that is they didn't re-insulate stuff. They took stuff out, took insulation out. And uh, in some areas, they didn't put it back. So there's no doubt in my mind about that. But we're going to God. And so uh, that's what we have to look forward to. He prepared a place for us. He did not leave us comfortless. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And that's the reason why uh, pre-tribulation rapture, uh, Jesus comes for us and, and takes us up. Uh, Satan, like I said, has control around. Satan wants to be the God of this earth. And when he comes down uh, mid-tribulation, that's, that's what the fight's all about. And he's trying to annihilate the Jewish people. But my point is, right now, Satan is waiting for this pre-tribulation rapture. He has authority in the clouds. Like I said, when, when the angel fought on his way to get down to uh, talk to Daniel, you know, he had to fight his way down. Well, Satan's got all those fellow angels fighting. Well, so there's a few thousand of us going up, not millions, but a few thousand. And when we go up, they're going, you know, he's going to want to try to grab them, but he can't because Christ is coming himself for us, for his bride in the clouds. And so uh, Satan can't touch us. We can't. We can't, uh, he can't get get a hold of us. He can't pluck us out of God's hands because we are God's. And that's what we're looking for. And we're in that season. It could be January. It could be February. You know, it's not January 11th, just like it wasn't January the 7th. Someone, a bunch of people are saying that date. No one knows there they are, but it's now. And these videos are to, to encourage, uh, to be in God's word, study the scripture in daily prayer, and uh, the, now it's the harvest, the end harvest. So pray for those family members and your friends, because once we're gone, they are lost. They are damned. Second uh, Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. God will send a strong delusion for those that didn't want to believe the truth. And a lot of people are being told, left behind in these books and series, and I constantly talk against, uh, say that all those people left behind, they're going to be saved. They are not. There's no second chances. When there's a time of judgment, there's a time of judgment. The second chance, I mean, it's not a second chance. The Jewish people were spiritually blinded. Now their eyes are going to be opened up. And there's Gentiles around this world in different areas that have not heard the gospel. So they would come to know the gospel. I just watched the brother in Christ the other day. I disagree with this. I didn't want to 
put things on his channel or anything, but he's talking about, uh, you know, doing leaving a, a left behind stuff, videos and stuff. People, don't you realize, for one thing, the people that are going to hear the gospel don't have internet. You know, internet's not everywhere. Uh, and for Jesus Christ comes the second coming, the gospel is going to be taught throughout the rest of the world. For an example, 144,000 Jewish uh, men are going to go out and preach the gospel. Well, it's like those, those uh, island of, I want to say Simoleons, but that's not correct, uh, over near India, where that young uh, man, 23-year-old man, died, uh, you know, like a couple years ago or so. He tried to go over there and be an evangelist. Why? He was well-meaning, but he didn't know this, you know, he went over there and, and they attacked him twice. The first time he made it back alive, and he decided to go back again. He didn't know the language. And so how's he going to evangelize them? Where these 144,000 Jewish people are going to have the gifts of the Spirit. So they're going to be able to speak that language. So they're going to go there and speak that language and witness to those people. And there may be people saved out of that group. That's the Gentiles they're talking about. These people that are, go to church, in the parable of the, of the uh, uh, Matthew 25, Verses 1 through 12, parable of 10 virgins, five wise, five unwise. They, they represent uh, the rapture of the church, the story, the wedding feast. They go to Christ. Five were accepted because they were prepared. They were the true body of Christ. Five went to get more oil for their lamps, came back, and they, they were not known. These, these represent people that are active in church, reading scripture, but they, they don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And reason because they've been following false doctrines. And because of that, for them, it's too late. Jesus doesn't know them. And that's what that's all about. There is not a big number that's going to be saved pre tribulation rapture. That's what people have to come to understand. It's a small amount. Jude 14, Jesus comes with ten of thousands of his saints. That's an eye opener. Now, when we talk about people, we're not talking about the children. The age of knowing, like 13 years old and under, they're automatically taken up, raptured, we're talking about the adults, all right? And the adults, uh, those that need have, have to be born again or they're not raptured. Uh, Pre-tribulation rapture, as I say, because there's more raptures to come. Uh, they, uh, There's not that many. There, that's that's the eye-opener. There's not that many at all. Well, I'm long-winded, as usual. God bless you. I look forward to meeting you in heaven. Uh, well, actually, in the clouds. And it could be any day, any day now. And so these are exciting times. Keep strong in God's word. Study, study, study. Watch different things, but be careful. And yes, even with me, go study and don't take my word on it. God bless you.